Oh, it's the Field of 68 After Dark, Sirius XM, Channel 84. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. We are presented by the fine folks at Bet Rivers Sportsbook. A huge Tuesday slate is ahead. One of those games is Illinois and Purdue, the rematch at Mackey Arena, set for Tuesday night, 9 Eastern time. I'm John Fanta, Terrence Oglesby, Jeff Goodman, are with me here on Sirius XM Channel 84. So let's jump right into it. A game of this or that. You have to take one. You have to tell us why. Jeff Goodman in tomorrow night's rematch, Illinois or Purdue? Uh, The Boilermakers. And it's an easy one for me because they got two dudes that can throw at Big Kofi, number one. Number two, have you been to Mackey Arena for a big game? It's a top five environment. You know, to me, it, it's Duke, Kansas, and then you can throw a bunch of other schools in there. Mackey's right there. So I'm going Purdue. You know, they're going to bring the noise because uh, what is Purdue like 80% uh, men and 20% women? It's all a bunch of frustrated boys up there in that student no wonder, section hey, going bizarre. No wonder why Hummel was so uh, upset. <laughs> Purdue. Yeah. He was angry the whole time he was there. Uh, angry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here, here's what worried me about the first matchup. Not so much that one team played a certain way. It was how Kofi Coburn did with guys his size. Right. It wasn't exactly. good. It wasn't good. That's what worries me more than anything. Uh, we're gonna. I'm going to bring up a name. I'm going to bring up a name. He's got to play well. He's got to be a lightning rod. Andre Corbello has to play well for them to have a chance. He has to. And the reason I'm saying that is because Purdue, they have a tendency to let guards get in the paint and let guards have it their way. If he plays well and he does his sporadic thing, I think they could compete. I'm going Purdue, though, because size against size, they just have more of it. Hey, it might have been his return game, but Curbelo did his sporadic thing in the first meeting between these two mm-hmm. teams, and it didn't matter. Travion Williams was too much down the stretch, and Purdue won in Champaign. So the rematch Tuesday night. This or that, let's stay with the fighting Illini, one particular player. T.O., Kofi Coburn or Oscar Shibway? I had to pull them up, but it's, I mean, you want to talk about splitting hairs. The only difference between the two is about four and a half rebounds a game, and that's Oscar Shibway. And Kofi Coburn's a better scorer, probably a more skilled offensive player. So you're taking four rebounds or you're taking six points. It's one or the other. I Oscar's relentless in his ability to stay out of foul trouble. His but, ability to, but, but he just can't score like he just can't score like Kofi. I don't. But, that, that's splitting hair, you guys. Split, here's hairs. what I would say. He, he, yes, he can stay out of foul trouble. But Kofi is Kofi makes. I'm telling you, Kofi makes Oscar look small. He makes him look small. And if you get the ball into Kofi, I don't think Oscar stands a chance. And I'll just go with like, like almost like it's a UFC fight. I'm going to take Kofi because he is bigger and stronger. I, I love Oscar to death, but I'm, I'm, I'm going with. Are you Kofi sure he's here. stronger? Because she boy Maybe is not so stronger, strong. But yeah, I don't, <laughs> he's bigger, man. He's probably 30. Yeah, he's, he's probably he's, got 30 pounds on him. Yep. Yep. All right. This or that. I am fascinated to have this discussion. Goodman. This or that. Metrics. Or resume? Resume. 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 Like, no question for me. I say it all the time. Like, this <laughs> Providence shit blows me away. What are they right now in the net, Fana? What are they? I'm getting it up right now, but it's not It's it's not. It's a joke. That kind. They, I mean, they were in the, they were sitting in the net. In, in, in the, in, okay. Ken in Pop. the net, they're 26. But again, they're 20 and 2, and they're 26 in the net. You know, you know what they are in uh, Kempom? You know what they are in Kempom? They 41. are yeah. 41. Yeah. 41. They're behind, ready? They're behind Wyoming. They're behind Utah State. They're behind UAB. They're behind Boise State. They're behind Washington State. They're behind San Francisco. They're behind Murray State. They are, how about this? They are 20 spots behind the Iowa Hawkeyes. I mean, it's garbage. It's absolute effing garbage. I get it. It's predictive. They're basically saying like Providence is going to lose in the NCAA tournament, I guess. I don't know. Maybe we should get Kenny Pom Poms on here, who I love. And, and, and I've talked to Kenny many a times, and I don't understand the metrics. I don't understand them really at all. But, but ultimately, what I do understand 
is that Providence is not the 41st best team in the country based on what they've done going 20 and two and 10 and one in the big East. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And they keep winning close games and it's always somebody different for Providence. Right. Obviously resume is the answer, but if you look at Providence's Kim Palm metrics, the reason they're bad is because the two losses they have had have been ass whoopings. Like you look at Virginia, you look at Marquette away. Those were tail whippings. And what happens is, is because they're all their wins are close, it's going to slant their metrics one way. I completely agree with you. Resume over everything. In my opinion, right now, yes. Providence is a top 10 team because they just find ways to continue to win at the end. And it's always somebody different. It's not beautiful basketball. The metrics will allude to that but it's 40 minutes of grinding nonstop, like getting after you. And it's a, it's, it's all culture. Culture is not in the like metrics, boys. I feel like Ken Palm, again, I'd love to know from Kenny, but like how much of it is like preseason rankings, you know, and, and what they've done over the last couple of years, because Wisconsin yeah. is 31st. And again, nobody had Providence or Wisconsin up there. When do you flip it and say like, okay, it's February 1st. Let's throw all the BS out from, what we thought they were going to be, and let's just go on what they are. Yes, but you can't go off a of preseason ranking. Not you can't now. go off preseason stuff. Not when there's four figures worth of transfers. Yeah, yes. how do you how do you accurately put together a preseason forecast when you have over a thousand transfers? And that's I not had Texas end. too. I had Texas too. Come on, I of course in I the missed. country, right? Yes, not in the Big Twelve in the country. Right. Here's the thing about Providence. You want your metrics, you want all your analytics, you want your numbers. I look at the stuff too and I see it. Here's the biggest metric. They are 8 and 0 in games decided by 6 points or less. When the going gets tough and they need to make something happen against Marquette, they make something happen. Their defense comes up with a stop. Al Dura makes a big time play. Nate Watson has one of the dunks of the year. At Xavier Durham has the unselfish knack to find Jared Bynum for a clutch game-winning three. They are a very good team in late-game situations, and that's a credit to Ed Cooley. You know what the best quote I've heard is? Travis Steele told me this. He goes, what's unbelievable about Providence is you know what their offense is. You know what Al Skinner was able to, to put together, and you know what Ed Cooley puts together. That's what's downright scary about Providence. The book's out on them. You know what's coming, and they're still able to execute and win these games. Well, it's because th- not a lot of people run that flex. That that no. you know it's that's old. what makes it difficult. You can prepare for it all you want. It's kind of like I, I say with Mike Anderson and St. John's a little bit, and when he was at Arkansas, it takes a couple times. That first time when you play against the team like that, you're going to have difficulty. And then again, when you've seen him a couple times in the league, y- you start to get a little bit better. Uh, and, and again, Providence, what Cooley's done there this year is remarkable. All right. So speaking of which, if you're a Providence fan listening right now, we are not going to unveil the winner tonight, but next Tuesday, February 15th, it's an eight Eastern time tip Villanova's at Providence. It's the big East game of the year. Jeff Goodman is going to grace his presence with the 12,000 or so humans at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. I use the word, I use the word humans lightly. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence Wait till I- T.O. Wait till T.O. gets there. This isn't Clemson, T.O. Uh, no. hey, hey, look, we used to have some, we, we had some environments back when I played that hasn't been like that in a long time in any ACC school. It hasn't been no. the same. I'm ready to get back up and see a Big East oh. full environment type so, situation. My first trip. T.O. is coming. I will be taking the Amtrak the morning of the 15th and making it to Providence. We will take a Friar fan out to dinner. Friar fans have been the subject of a lot of a lot of uh, picking and hatred this season from a, a lot of different people. If you Notice subscribe- Doster's not coming. Yeah, Rob Doster's not invited. Found. He's not invited. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a contest. If you subscribe to our Field of 68 YouTube channel and you screenshot it to us, then uh, we will pick one lucky fan to join us for dinner on the legendary Federal Hill. So that will be fantastic. Okay, this or that, quickly, rapid fire. We have two minutes left. This or that, T.O., at full strength, Kentucky or Auburn? Man, Auburn still has the best player on the floor no matter what. I know Ty Ty Washington, you need him at full strength. I think at Kentucky, Kentucky wins on a neutral floor. It's going to be really interesting, but give me Auburn on the neutral floor because you know where you should go with the ball. They didn't against Georgia, but they should. They might have been a learning experience for Bruce Pearl and his staff. Kentucky. 
Kentucky because of Ty Ty Washington. I think he'll be the difference maker. He's the best guard on the floor. Guards win in the NCAA tournament. So let's stay right there. This or that, Goodman. In the NCAA tournament, Jabari Smith or Ty Ty Washington? Um, Ty Ty, he's going to have the ball in his hands. You can just give him the ball at the end of a game. He can make a play. Hopefully they do that. Again, Severe Wheeler has the ball in his hands a lot. If I'm John Calipari, I don't know if I can play Severe a ton because he can't shoot it. I like uh, Jabari because he can extend over the top, and he's one of the best shooting big men in the country. He's probably the best shooting big man in the will, country. Will Wendell Green pass him the ball? That's the big That's a big – That's a, yeah, that's a big <laughs> F. Now, that, that's why I do like Ty Ty in some of those situations, but if they can get it to Jabari, I'd pick him. I got 15 seconds. Number one, Auburn is at Arkansas tomorrow night. T.O., who wins? Let's go Arkansas. They're fired up. Upset city. Ooh. Must bus. Let's go. Ooh, Goodman, five seconds. Auburn, they got the wake-up call against Georgia. They win. Auburn has not lost on the road this season. That is in store tomorrow. We're back with you at 11 p.m. Eastern time. Feel the 68 after dark. Sirius XM Channel 84 for T.O. Jeff Goodman. I'm John Fanta.